Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. And video games have quickly become an art form to tell great stories. They have well-written and beloved characters, their cinematic experiences, and yeah, these single player experiences have quickly become an art form in the video game industry. The question now though is what are some of the best stories and single player experiences that you can play right now for the Xbox series and Xbox One? And what we're actually gonna take a look at the top 15 best Xbox single player experiences that you can play right now. These games offer great stories, beloved characters, and well, they're just simply fun to play. But as always, keep in mind that this list is only my opinion, and if I miss a game that you feel deserves to be on this list, make sure to let me know in the comments below. With that said, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. And to start this list off, I actually have two games here that might be a little bit more of a surprise. Neither one of these are necessarily cinematic, but they're still good single player experiences with great overall stories. And that is the Ori franchise being Ori in the Blind Forest, as well as Ori in the Will of the Wisps. And then you have Hades. Now, both of these games are very different, with Ori being a Metroidvania style of game with a focus on its platforming, and then you have Hades, which is a roguelike experience with that hack and slash style of combat. But one way that these games are similar in is that they do offer really well told stories. Now, Ori is more on the emotional side of things, and it's a little bit more abstract. The game's not necessarily filled with a ton of dialogue, but it still offers a beautifully told story that at times might even move you to tears. It really is a beautifully emotionally told story. And then over on the Haiti side of things, where its main draw is actually with how it portrays its characters. You do play as the son of Hades trying to escape hell, and in this process, you're gonna die, and you're gonna die a lot. But with each death, you almost feel rewarded because you get to talk with the characters in the universe just a little bit more, and you really start to form these bonds with all of the characters throughout its world. And because the voice acting and the writing is just done so phenomenally well in Hades, it really stands out. So while both Hades and the Ori franchise are definitely different than some of the other games that we have on this list, because these games are just so fun, and they do also offer good stories, so I thought these games deserved to be on this list. And here I have a Plague Tale, which is quite a unique game. Instead of playing as some overpowered superhero type of character, instead you play as two young children running away from the Inquisition in a rat-plagued world. So instead of going in guns blazing, you're actually going to have to use stealth and your smarts to outwit your opponents. We don't really get a lot of these stealth-based games anymore, but I do think that A Plague Tale really does a good job with its stealth component in this game, mixing in some puzzle elements on top of that. And then there's just the well-told story. You do play as the older sister just trying to take care of her sickly brother and get him to safety. You're really going to see their relationship blossom throughout the game as they're going to have to learn to trust each other in order to survive this dark, plague-driven world. And here I have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is kind of a mix between Titanfall with its movement, of course you have the Star Wars IP, and then it's kind of got combat akin to the Dark Souls franchise. It's an interesting mix of things, but it works really well together. It's got really fun and rewarding gameplay, but I think what a lot of fans are going to be really happy with when it comes to this game is that this is possibly the best Star Wars game ever made. It's really probably going to come down to this or Knights of the Old Republic depending on which one you like, but this is a very good Star Wars game. I will say though that I don't think that you necessarily have to be a Star Wars fan to enjoy this game because really it's just a good game. And a big part of that is because this game was developed by Respawn Entertainment which just knows how to make good games. And for that matter, I'm going to go ahead and recommend Titanfall 2 as well. That's a first person shooter with a surprisingly very well made single player campaign. Now here I actually went ahead and combined two other franchises because you know I try to compile as many games into these lists as I possibly can. And this would be the big Xbox franchises, Halo and then Gears of War. The thing about both of these franchises though are that they're actually known for being the complete experience. Not only do they offer a good multiplayer, but they do offer a really good single player experience as well. So you're really going to get the best of both worlds when it comes to these games. With Gears of War though, I would actually 
consider that to be the best third person shooter of all time because the mechanics just feel absolutely amazing. But growing up, I fell in love with the universe and characters in these games. You just become so invested with its apocalyptic world as they struggle to survive as these monsters have risen from up underground and have just killed so many people throughout the world. There's always that struggle to survive, but there's always that will to fight as you see time and time again with the characters throughout these games. Now, of course, you also have Halo, which is one of the most well-known and popular first-person shooters of all time, and that's for a very good reason. Yes, its multiplayer is good, but also it has a fun single-player experience as well. You play as a superhuman Spartan trying to save the universe, and I would say that this game does have an interesting story filled with a lot of memorable characters throughout the universe. And not only that, but there's a lot of lore when it comes to the Halo franchise. If you really want to dive into Halo, there's a lot there. And here I have Control, which is this gorgeous looking third person shooter with a ton of creativity. I love watching how the world and story of this game just kind of unfolds and I mean that quite literally because the building that you're in does morph as you progress through the game and that also includes your weapon. Your weapon also morphs into various different weapons and then on top of that you have all of these superhero type abilities. You can kind of glide around, you can pick rubble off the ground and create a shield and then throw it at your enemies and you can even manipulate your enemies to attack others. There's just all of these different abilities that are not only creative but they're also extremely fun. Because this game looks so good though, I would recommend playing this one on the Xbox Series or the Xbox One X. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to both Alan Wake as well as Quantum Break. These games were also developed by Remedy Entertainment and they have great single player campaigns and if you like Control, I would check those ones out as well. Final Fantasy is one of the most influential franchises in the entire industry and, well, for good reason. These are among the best JRPGs ever made, but they're also among the very best games ever made. And that's just for so many different reasons. They have gripping stories with some of the most charming and lovable characters, and then they have these amazingly thought out worlds. And what's so cool about these games is that they are absolutely timeless. I feel like every year the Final Fantasy franchise just grows in its fandom because people go back and they play these old games and they fall in love with them just as many people did before. But that really is kind of the big question when it comes to Final Fantasy. Which game do you choose? And honestly, everybody has their own favorite. So I would really recommend almost all of the mainline Final Fantasy games that are available on Xbox. You have Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, and 15, all of which are really good in their own right. I will say my favorites are 7 and 8, but I also think 9, 12, and 15 are highly enjoyable, so really you can go with any of the mainline Final Fantasy games. Oh, and I can't forget about Lost Odyssey, which is made by Hironobu Sakaguchi, the father of Final Fantasy, and it practically is an HD Final Fantasy game. Tomb Raider has been such a beloved franchise over the years, and with the new trilogy, you can once again see why. These are top tier cinematic experiences, whether you play Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, Rise of the Tomb Raider, or even Shadow of the Tomb Raider. All of these games set you out on a grand adventure filled with mystery. And the most important thing is that these games are always fun. It very much takes inspiration from the Uncharted franchise, which is kind of amusing considering Uncharted was originally inspired by Tomb Raider. So you kind of went full circle there. Either way, the Tomb Raider games are very fun that offers a lot of variety. You're going to have plenty of platforming sections, there's various puzzles and tombs to solve, and then the action-based combat feels tight and fun on top of that. Sometimes you're going to have these stealth-based sections where you can take advantage of your bow and arrow, while others you're going to be running all over the place, hanging off walls and shooting the various enemies in your path. And then graphically, these games really stand out. 3D platformers aren't often associated with good stories, but Psychonauts 2 is a rare breed. Now, I'm actually still playing through this game, and I, I might actually have this on ranked higher when all is said and done, but this game is flat out amazing. First off, it's one of the best 3D platformers that I've ever played, and it ranks right up there with your Mario Odysseys, your Astro Bots, your Banjo-Kazooies, and this game is just so insanely creative 
and it has tight 3D platforming mechanics, and surprisingly, it has some of the better combat in a 3D platformer as well. So it plays phenomenally well, but where I think Psychonauts 2 really separates itself is with its story, universe, and its characters. Of course, this game was developed by Double Fine, which is well known for their work on point and click adventure games, which do typically have really well made stories. It's always just got this quirky humor to it, and I absolutely adore the characters in this game. And then there's the story, which yes, it is very humorous, but there's actually a deeper meaning behind the story in this game as well. Psychonauts 2 does tackle mental illnesses in a very interesting way. Sure, it's a humorous game, but oftentimes it has you thinking just a little bit deeper. And the way this all plays out is that you actually enter the minds of different people throughout the game and you kind of see the world in their eyes through kind of a dream state. This is where the insane amount of creativity comes from, but you do actually get to help out some of these people kind of face their inner demons. It's actually beautifully done. In recent years, Capcom has just been knocking it out of the park with the Resident Evil franchise. I mean, the Resident Evil games have always been beloved, but I mean, here recently with games like Resident Evil 2 Remake, you have Resident Evil 3, there's Resident Evil 7 and Village. I mean, these games are really among the best games, it seems like year in and year out. And that's why we're going to talk about it on this list, because they are among the best single player experiences. Now, which Resident Evil game is the absolute best is a little bit debatable, though I will say that my favorite is Resident Evil 2. I think Resident Evil 2 stands tall among one of the best franchises to ever be made, but that is something to kind of keep in mind. This is a very good franchise, pretty much through and through, outside of maybe a couple entries, and that really shows with the newer entries as well. Resident Evil 7 and then Village are a little bit different than some of the other Resident Evil games because these are actually first person shooters but a lot of people do consider that to be an overall more immersive experience and i think that definitely shows especially with resident evil village it seems like they really perfected that first person shooter experience here and this game really gets crazy this game really does get insane the further you get into it and i have to hand it to the protagonist of this game ethan yeah he really goes through a lot as you play through this game now here's another game that kind of tackles mental illnesses and that would be Hellblade. I've actually heard people say that this game has legitimately helped them with some of the issues that they've went through in life and that's because this game has a remarkable story with just such a good characterization of Senua. I mean, the actress Melina Jorgens did just such a good job with Sinua in this game and just making it an overall believable experience. The facial expressions just look so lifelike, and this is really one of the best story-driven cinematic experiences that you can play in video games right now. I, however, do actually like the gameplay quite a bit. It's got this hack and slash style of gameplay, and there's plenty of different settings and some puzzles thrown in. It's actually a fun game as well. Now, I will go ahead and say that I do recommend playing this game with headphones because the, the audio is done extraordinarily well in this game. And as Sinua hears voices in her head, yeah, headphones really help out when it comes to this game and just completely immersing yourself. If you just want a good story, then look no further than the Yakuza franchise. Now, I know that these games look a little goofy on the surface, and, and in many ways they really are. Whether that be with their combat, the mini games, or even parts of the story, yeah, they can be a little goofy at times. But the stories are always just so gripping, filled with twists and turns at every corner. It always has you at the edge of your seat. That's really a testament of not just the writing, but also the characters as well as the Japanese atmosphere in these games. Now, I would recommend starting off with Yakuza 0 or Judgment. Judgment's actually a spinoff to Yakuza with a completely separate cast of characters, and it does have a dub. So if you don't like English subtitles, then Judgment would be a great route to take as well. Either way, both Yakuza and Judgment are must-play games for fans of good stories in video games. Nier has quickly become one of my favorite franchises in the entire industry, and part of that is because of their strangeness. I think on the surface, both Nier Automata as well as Nier Replicant Remaster, they have these really intriguing worlds and cast of characters, but there's always this strangeness to it. It just kind of feels like its own thing, and the more you dig into these games, the better they get. 
So when you combine the story, its well-made characters, its universe, and then the music, which is among my favorite in any game ever made, it just becomes an overall masterpiece. And that's just on the story side of things. These games are also insanely fun with their hack and slash combat, though it does kind of switch its gameplay style every once in a while with these shoot 'em up sections as well. Either way, and in terms of fun factor, these games are also insanely fun. Now, I will say that you have to beat these games numerous times before you see the official ending. Unlike a lot of games out there, when you see the end credits, it's not the end. The next playthrough should be different that will kind of unfold the story even more and then do that again and then you'll get that official ending. And let me tell you, the payoff is well worth it. So if you're looking for games that are just a little bit different, that's really going to stick with you for the long haul, then you need to check out Nier Automata as well as Nier Replicant Remaster. It's never been so easy to call games masterpieces. One of the best trilogies ever made just got a remaster for modern hardware, and that would be the Mass Effect trilogy. With the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, you can actually play through the original Mass Effect trilogy, which is easily some of the best stories that you're going to play in any game ever made. And a big part of that is its characters and universe. Now, you being the pivotal person in the universe, you're actually going to have a big impact on how everything shapes out. Your choices will reflect on the characters in this game as well as the overall story, which extends from Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 2 to Mass Effect 3. All your choices will carry over to the next game, and I think for the most part, Mass Effect does this very well. Now, the ending is a little bit more debatable, but the journey is definitely well worth it. Interestingly enough, though, these are third-person shooter RPGs, and I actually think in both aspects, Mass Effect does this very well. With Mass Effect Legendary Edition, we do see a big improvement in Mass Effect 1 in specific, but it's got strong shooting mechanics for a third-person shooter, and then it's got a lot of RPG elements as well. And of course, with all of the different choice that you have in terms of its story, these are just great single-player games. A lot of the times when you have these big open world games, sacrifices have to be made. But with Red Dead Redemption 2, it almost seems to prove that completely wrong. This game from a technical perspective is nothing short of impressive. Graphically, Red Dead Redemption 2 sits among the very best, but I think what really just kind of draws you in with this game is its animations. Sure, it might be a little slower paced than what some may like, but every single thing you do in this game is animated to an extreme degree. And it just makes everything feel so realistic and lifelike. And I think it just kind of draws you into the world that much more. And then beyond that, it has one of the more memorable stories alongside its characters in video games. I, everything is just so well written in this game. And I think by the end, because this is a long game, I think it's like 50 hours if I remember right, you are really going to feel connected with the characters in this universe and just kind of watch how it twists and turns along the way. Now, I will say with this game being a third person shooter, I'm not really big into the lock on mechanic. This is something that Grand Theft Auto does as well. And well, that makes sense considering this is coming from the same studio, Rockstar. But even then, it's still a fun game to play. And because of its amazingly told story, which I would consider to be among the very best, this really is one of the best games that's been made in the last decade. And at the number one spot, and I hate to do this to you all, but I have to put The Witcher 3 at that number one spot again. And I think this really is just kind of a testament to just how good this game really is. I believe The Witcher 3 will go down in history as one of the very best RPGs to ever be made. And I think that's going to be the case for a very long time to come. It really is just that good. First off, you have the story and its characters, and that's kind of a theme when it comes to this video. In order to be one of the best single player experiences, you do have to have a good story and characters, and The Witcher 3 does that easily. You're going to fall in love with the characters in this universe, and because you do have an impact on its engrossing world, well, you're going to have to make some pretty tough choices. And that's something that's really always kind of stood out to me when it comes to The Witcher. Sometimes when you have to make a choice, you really have to pick between the lesser evils. It actually makes some of these decisions incredibly difficult. And I don't usually see that in games. Usually I can kind of just stick with one path. But in The Witcher 3, I think they really make you think about the end result. And that's just with the main missions. As a bit of a change of pace, 
The Witcher 3 also has really good side missions as well that I would consider to be better than some main games entirely. I don't know how that's possible, but it really is when it comes to The Witcher 3. I even really like the combat. It's just kind of its own thing. It doesn't really play like other games, but you do have some light magic abilities alongside your hack and slash style combat. I personally think it feels good, but yeah, when you hear people say that The Witcher 3 is one of the best RPGs ever made, yeah, I completely agree with that, but I would also say it's one of the best games ever made. Anyways, though, that's it for this list, but if I missed any game that you feel deserves to be on here, let me know in the comments below. With that said, if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.